Well, welcome to Resonate. Um, I'm really blessed this morning to have an old friend uh, who, who used to lead XLP, now is the leader of a new ministry, Kintsugi Hope. And uh, is that pronounced right? Kintsugi. Yeah. It's the wonderful Patrick Reagan. Patrick is an amazing uh, and inspirational um, friend. He's just constantly, I just watched him pivot his life to the things that are so important in each season and um, work his, his whole life and his ministry towards those things which other of us, others of us look on and say, how on earth can we even begin to meet that need? <laughs> um, but he's, he's been able to amazingly and wonderfully uh, orientate his, his life and his ministry and his family um, towards those things affecting so often the, the last, the least. Yeah, you do it so well. You make it, well, I wouldn't say you make it look easy, Patrick. No, <laughs> it's definitely not true. <laughs> but, but, but you certainly inspire us as you do it. Mate, what's uh, resonating? Well, it's been, you know, I, I've been really thinking through recently, Phil, around this whole um, concept of the difference between fitting in and belonging. And, um, and I think so often we, we try to fit in where actually where we need to be is, is to come to a place of belonging. And, and just thinking about the difference between the two, really, I think it's really, really interesting discussion. And, um, and, you know, the brilliant Brené Brown, I've been reading some of her stuff and she is amazing. I mean, she says, you know, belonging is being somewhere you want to be and they want you fitting in is being somewhere where you want to be, but they don't care one way or the other, which I think is a really interesting. Belonging is about being accepted for you fitting in yeah. is being accepted for being like everyone else um wow. and if i get to be me i belong yeah. and if i have to be like like you i fit in and yeah. uh great, and I think, great definition um, yeah i just think it's really interesting and i think you know just looking at faith as well i'm thinking my goodness you know we spend so much time trying to fit in with everyone else and Jesus spent a lot of his time just disappointing people. <laughs> just, I never noticed it before. But it was like he disappointed the disciples. He disappointed the Pharisees. He disappointed the culture of the day. Yeah. Um, in fact, he spent most of his life um, saying no to things and living to obviously his father's agenda. And, and yeah, so I've been really grappling with this. What does it mean to belong? And I think I'm coming to a conclusion it means to be to be really authentic, to really be the person that God's called you to be um, mm, and brilliant. not try and fit into a culture or fit into society's expectations. Um, mm. and I think it's That sometimes important. takes a, half a lifetime to work out, doesn't it? I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how many times I've grappled with this one uh, yeah. in, different seasons, in different seasons of life, and it, but uh, yeah. it's not an easy lesson to learn, is it? No, it is, it is really tough. I think that... Um, I think so often it's when you hit a wall, isn't it? It's when you hit a bit of a crisis moment and uh, that's when you start thinking this sort of stuff through at a deeper level, really. You ask the bigger question, don't you? Yeah. 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 Why, no, am, I definitely. Doing, why am I doing this? What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you go back to it, isn't it? It's, um, and I think the difference, I mean, I've just started a new, writing a new book on resilience and, and it's almost like, if you're not careful, those books can become very sort of self-help type books. And I keep coming back to the fact that it's not, um, it's not actually simply about becoming who you are. It's about whose you are. And that constant connection into who you are in Christ is, is so important um, at yeah. this time where it's, you know, it's easy not to feel like you belong because yeah. loneliness is a real issue for a lot of people at the moment and isolation yeah. and that sense of, um worry about the future what, what i don't know what was going on there phil did you just do an exercise or <laughs> <laughs> no one of the guys i just passed he's, he's doing his, his park exercise you get everything in this part mate it's really interesting <laughs> that was brilliant <laughs> segue yeah yeah sorry interrupted you <laughs> no no that's fine um, so yes, yeah, so I just think this whole area of belonging at the moment, where our country um, uh, needs to know who who's it is, um, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is this issue of identity. I think this is a, the moment that we're in. It seems to be a question everybody's asking, isn't it? Mm. In terms of 
of the increased sense of mortality through the pandemic yeah and through, and uh, the, the whole issue of race uh, yeah. that is uh, quite rightfully um, surfacing as a, a discussion that people are grappling with and uh, the, the, so identity what is it that's helped you mate in terms of finding who you are in Christ what's that journey been about I, 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 yeah I think it's really it, it's a constant journey isn't it because I feel like um I mean, as you know, like, you know, I lived in Peckham for most of my life and uh, and worked with um, amazing young people, but really with just the most complex and challenging lives. And uh, and a lot for me was like, um, I don't think I'm street enough to do this job. You know, I didn't I, I wasn't in a gang when I was a kid. I wasn't uh, I didn't have some of the complexes, uh, complexities that these guys have. And I really felt like. I'm just not enough. You know, this shouldn't work. There's no way this, this should work in any way. And then on the other hand, um, I spent the rest of my time like in the house of commons or doing TV interviews or working <laughs> with academics and yeah. you know, I'll be in the house of commons and they'll be using words I've never heard before in my life. I remember yeah. I was one time I was Googling the words to see if I could work out what they were saying. <laughs> the, the problem with that is Google only works if you can spell, you know, so it just looked like I'd written in tongues or something. And, and this whole feeling of um, not enough is it constantly goes around your head. You're not street enough. You're not academic enough. Um, yeah. I remember when some really famous speaker came, um, you would know who he is, but he came to XLP and he asked everyone in the, in the room what their degree was in. Um, and that was his opening line. And I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. And he got to me and I was like, I don't actually have a degree. Um, and I just like sunk, you know, as if I was like, what am I doing? I'm a complete fraud. And, uh, and I know, and I think I've been reflecting on that is that, um, you know, both of us know Les Isaac really well. And I remember Les really helped me on that, particularly around some of the, the race stuff, you know. Um, and he was like, the color of your skin is really important, but actually it's the condition of your heart that's really going to also speak to people. Mm -hmm. and and I've always you know there's so much in the Bible about the condition of our hearts and because uh, out of our hearts everything else flows and and I guess it's for me it's constantly going back you know what does success look like success actually yeah. isn't about numbers isn't about appearing successful I think it's being true to your values it's being true to what God's put in your heart and yeah. and I think that's a journey I'm learning every single day you know yeah. um yeah. and to approach life with that sort of humility rather than yeah. you know the, I'm not enough I'm not enough I'm not enough um yeah well, it, it's hard <laughs> it's the old I didn't go to university I didn't get, get a degree either so you know I think I've got three O levels <laughs> as far as I can remember <laughs> and so people ask me you know what's your sometimes when that issue has risen to the surface you know I said well I'm I'm in the university of life you know it's the classic answer isn't it yeah yeah and um but uh, I think yeah. we are blessed and privileged to have been part of a wider community aren't we as well that have, have, have mentored one another and uh, yeah absolutely. and journeyed yeah. together over many years and uh, just observed you know where those things which each of us have been able to wrestle with and grapple with that have continued. I think God has been good in, in, yeah. in all these years to actually help us to continue to strengthen that identity. Yeah, I think Phil, don't you though? It's like I think maybe, particularly in the Christian culture today, but but certainly ten years ago, there was a real sense of getting identity through what you did, and it was yeah. almost like exhaustion for Christ. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It was like. <laughs> Um, there was this huge emphasis on yeah. activity and what you're doing and sacrifice yeah. that actually what you got 10 years later is a load of burnt out leaders, yeah. um, some who are not even leaders anymore, um, yeah. who are just disillusioned with the whole thing because it was just never I, sustainable. Yeah, and, no, it's uh, I'm glad you raised that because I think it is absolutely a, a cultural. It's what you believe in. It's, it's the nuances of your theological and your, what you practice and demonstrate to people, yeah. you know, what actually 
are we communicating about value and uh, identity? And I think you're right. It was far too, so a lot of what we were doing was far too driven. Um, it's absolutely true. I personally am a bit too lazy. I'm not too, uh, I'm not as driven as, 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 no, as a lot of no. my kids. I think there's a personality thing that comes out of this as well. <laughs> I, I, I've got too much of a sense of self-preservation personally to, uh, to be as driven as some of my peers who I look on with awe and say, wow. <laughs> yeah. The more and more I've looked at resilience, um, it's really fascinating. It, it's really about living out of your values. That's what keeps people going. If you can live out of your values, you know, and I've always known you, and I've always think your values around a relationship, being really intentional about relationship, is around family, um, it's around well-being, it's around justice, it's around unity. And oh, I think you. that um, if you live out your values, that's, that's, that's the most important thing. You know, mm. um, Diane, my wife, she did some fascinating research on those that coped better in concentration camps. It was from Harvard um, yeah. and, uh, you know, Viktor Frankl and, and all those sort of amazing people. And it was really oh, interesting. Amazing. They said um, the optimists didn't last very long in concentration camps. They died within weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's not just about being positive about everything. Um, that doesn't often work. Yeah. The people that did really well well were those that accepted they're in a really desperate position they accepted that this is going to be tough and i think that's where we are now we need to accept this is tough this is a tough situation the country the yeah. world is in but yeah. what the people that did well was then the people that lived out of their values they lived and finding somehow they found meaning and purpose in the situation they were in in the concentration camp and so they started the ones that started to care for others who started to um form choirs or do little projects um it was that sense of when they lived out of their values it didn't mean that they lived longer it just meant that whilst they was in a really difficult place that actually they flourished uh in in in, in any way that you can you know they, they did well in their inner being i guess um yeah. while their outside was obviously um uh, falling apart so i think values is so important at this time knowing your values yeah. Uh, like you, I was Googling a word the other day and it was um, fortitude. <laughs> and I think uh, you're right that actually oh, values, yeah. give, values give us fortitude. I don't even, I'm not sure I can actually accurately say what it means, but it, I liked it when I heard it. It's that sense of being able to carry on even when everything's falling apart um, in, in, in situations around you. Yeah. That's, there's an inner strength that we, yeah. we, can, we have to draw on. Which is, I would suggest, as we've already said, is is that sense of Christ in us, yeah. The hope of this yeah. hope, the hope of something much bigger to come, and a better yeah. future because of his yeah. his involvement. Yeah. Mate, we I, I don't want to end this conversation because it's <laughs> I'm enjoying it too much. But we're going to have to no land worries. it. But any last thoughts? No, I think I think I just that uh, whole thing around you know. Um, just to encourage people to keep going and mm. you know resilience is thriving in the midst of adversity so we have to accept that this is tough we have to accept it's hard but we know that we we do belong and i think you know encouraging people to be authentic being honest being real uh when you show up and you're those things that's when you really belong um and we need people to be more themselves not try and fit into um yeah. what society and what they feel like everyone else needs them to be yeah yeah well not said Mate, God bless you. God bless Diane. Look after yourself. Yeah, look after yourself. We'll see All you right. soon. God bless. See ya.